number 25 with 90 points, we have Jamila Woods with Legacy Legacy. Kind of like at Rhapsody by Eve, this one seems to also have a theme. This R&B album, really solid, has a lot of great arrangements, has some solid guest artists like Seba, and follows a thematic narrative talking about race relationships in America, even having all the tracks being named after influential African Americans in history. Whether we're talking about music like Miles Davis, or if we're talking about writing like James Baldwin. I've never listened to Jamila Woods, but I will definitely be checking her out after this album definitely made my list. Number 24 with 92 points, we have Black Midi with Schlagenheim, a noise rock group. Something that I'm not really a huge fan of. I enjoyed the Tar Daughters album last year, but I'm not someone who will be seeking out noise rock. This is not a bad album though. The lead singer on this album is really interesting, has a lot of really good flair to their voice. It kind of reminds me of like a Talking Heads, but it doesn't do enough to get me to really enjoy this album. And that's why I didn't make my list. Number 23 with 98 points, we have Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib with Bandana. I have a lot of rap albums on my list this time around, which is something that I've been really lacking over the years. And I've been making an effort to listen to more and more rap. This one, good. There's just, in my opinion, more interesting rap albums throughout the year. Solid, just not as memorable as some of the other ones. Number 22, we have 99 points. We have Aldous Harding with Designer, a folk rock, indie rock group with a lot of really interesting uh, arrangements, really fun folky ideas, a lot of solid harmonies. I love the song Picture Picture. I love the beginning of this album. It kind of tails off a little bit at the end, but it does enough to warrant a spot on my list. Number 21, Ariana Grande with Thank You Next with 104 points. Now we finally reach the point in time where we hit 100 points. That's just how close all these groupings are and just how over the board a lot of the people are when it comes to their favorite albums. As you can see, uh, I'm pretty uh, opinionated with this as well. We're getting a lot of albums where I'm not a huge fan of. And to be honest, same thing with Thank You Next. I honestly think Sweetener is a better album. This one is not necessarily a memorable pop album to me. It doesn't really feel much different from what she's done before. And because of that, I'm just not really interested in it. I don't know why it particularly it's this high. I would put Charlie XCX's album before this. So yeah, you can see how I feel about that. Number 20, Dave with Psychodrama with 180 points. This is one of the better rap albums I've heard all year. It's another rapper from the UK and this one is really interesting. This one has a narrative theme with Dave going to his therapist and having him take a look at his life. It's not necessarily the most original idea but it is done very well and there's some great highlights on this album. Definitely worth a listen. Definitely on my list. Number 19 with 111 points we have another UK rapper with Slow Tie with Nothing Great About Britain. This one is also really great. Slow Tie doesn't necessarily have much of a narrative approach as opposed to Kano and Dave, but the way that he raps is just goes so hard and so heavy. That is so much fun to listen to. Definitely made my list. Number 18, we have with 115 points, Big Thief with two hands. Now, interesting enough, Big Thief made this list twice, and I'm gonna skip ahead because of that. So at 18, they had two hands, and at 13, with 157 points, they had UFOF. Personally, between the two, I like UFOF better, and the first time I listened to it, I enjoyed it more. I found it more beautiful, I found it more calming, and I think it suits the lead singer's voice a little bit better. Two Hands is good enough, but I think that there's a little bit too much more indie rock vibe to it, and I don't think it suits the person's voice as much. However, I just recently listened to UFOF again, and I'm finding it not as memorable as I once did. So there is a chance that both of these can make the list, there's a chance that only one of them can, and there's a chance that neither of them will. So stay tuned for that. That's a little bit of a cliffhanger for you, if you will. Going back at number 17 with 
129 points, we have Michael Kiwanuka with Kiwanuka. Michael Kiwanuka is a British singer-songwriter, does a little bit more soulful singer-songwriter work. Really enjoyed this album. For those of you who don't know who he is, he does have a song that you may know called Cold Little Heart, though you might not know it by name. I did not, but I took a listen to this one and thoroughly enjoyed it. One of the best singer-songwriter albums of the year definitely makes my list. Number 16, with 129 points, we have Fontaine's DC with Dog Roll. One that I did not think was going to make my list, but this one is an earworm because this one just keeps gnawing at you. And it gnawed at me to the point where I've really started to enjoy this album. This is an Irish punk band, and this one has a little bit more of an 80s flair, like mid-era clash. A little bit more soft, not as in your face like some other punk bands. And because of that, I find a lot of it very entertaining and a lot of their talk about unrest in, in Ireland as well as other problems going on in the world ring really true on this album. I also like the lead singer's voice. The Irish brogue does not get in the way. It's really solid. Definitely take a listen if you're looking for a really good punk album this year. Definitely made my list. Number 15, we have with 144 points, Brittany Howard with Jamie. Yes, the lead singer of Alabama Shakes came out with her debut album. It has a lot of really solid songs. This is one that pains me to say did not make my list. With so many good albums this year, even with songs like Stay High and Short and Sweet, this album has too many faults, in my opinion, to warrant a spot on my list. But it's still a really good debut solo album I heard that you need to check out if you are an Alabama Shakes fan. Her voice is still phenomenal on this album, and she plays around with some ideas that you wouldn't expect from her. Number 14 with 146 points we have Little Sims with Grey Area, another English rapper and one that also hits hard and heavy and unlike Slow Tie has a little bit better flow. Out of all these British rappers I've talked about, she has the best flow. Her style is a little bit more old school rap with not so like 80s rap in terms of her arrangements. Really fun to listen to, really solid. Does not stayed that long so definitely worth your time definitely worth my time definitely made my list number 12 of 168 points we have lizzo with because i love you one that i wasn't going to check out before until my friend told me i had to listen to the whole entire thing it's one of the better pop albums of this year every song hits hard every song could be a single and that is also kind of its detriment even with a lot of single power there isn't a lot of substance behind that. It's still a great album, still one of my favorites of the year, definitely made my list. This is honestly though the perfect place to put it in my opinion. It's right around there for me as well. Number 11, with 169 points we have Vampire Weekend with Father of the Bride. Another one of these albums that has a lot of really good single power. Harmony Hall is phenomenal, This Life is a lot of fun, but there's a lot of songs on this 16 track album that just don't pan out to me. For an album to be that high, you have to have almost everything perfect. This is definitely not it. It did make a spot on my list, but it's not number 11 material. Number 10, with 172 points, we have Solange with When I Get Home. A Seat at the Table is absolutely gorgeous album. If you've not listened to that album, definitely take a listen. It was one that, looking back, I should have ranked a lot higher on my 2016 list. This one, unfortunately, doesn't hit as well. And... It pains me because I wanted to really like this album. A lot of people have said that I'm not understanding it, and that might be the case. However, in my opinion, the problem I have with this album is it feels like a lot of filler and a lot of interludes. I believe this album is about like 17 or 19 tracks, and it doesn't start getting to a point where it feels like a cohesive idea and a main cohesive idea until about a quarter of the way through. You get a lot of songs that are very quick, you got a lot of interludes, you get a lot of songs that have very repetitive lyrics and not really much substantive lyrics. It sucks because there's so many beautiful R&B jazz inspired arrangements, it's just they feel a little bit wasted to me. And because of that, it doesn't make my list. I wish it did. 
I, I tried so hard to be able to get to the mindset to really like this album. But in my opinion, I don't understand why it is as high as it is. If it was a little bit more substantive, like a seat at the table, it easily could have been in the top 10. Unfortunately, it left a lot to be as desired in my opinion. Number nine, we have with 182 points, Sharon Van Eden with Remind Me Tomorrow. Another one of these indie folky artists. This one didn't really stand out to me the first time around. I've listened to it a couple more times and it's trying to grow on me. This one just might miss my list only because I didn't listen to it soon enough, but it's on those outskirts. It just might sneak in. Number eight with 190 points, we have Purple Mountains with Purple Mountains. This particular group is a David Berman led group. And for those of you who don't know, he passed away shortly after making this album. There does definitely add some tragedy to there, but make no mistake, this is still a really solid album. It has some really, really beautiful moments. Nice That Won't Happen is easily one of the most heartbreaking songs of 2019 absolutely beautiful there's even some like cynical uh humor nihilistic humor on some other songs on here I, I, one that sticks out to me is darkness and cold i'm not as high as on it on it as everybody else maybe it's just because i didn't get into this person beforehand but i can see the appeal and it definitely made my list just not as high as everybody else number seven and the first one of these that has 200 points. Now we're getting to a point where it's a little bit more spaced out. With 223 points, we have Way is Blood with Titanic Rising. I really enjoy this album. This one has like a very like 60s, 70s folky feel at times. The lead singer has an absolutely gorgeous voice that could have fit in that 60s, 70s rock vibe. But it also does have some points where it's a little bit more modern and even has some kind of Muse-esque vibes at times. Short album with a lot of really interesting ideas about dating in the modern age and about other particular things going on in the modern age. Uh, that's definitely worth a listen. It definitely made my list. Number six with 239 points, we have Angel Olsen with All Mirrors. Did not really enjoy her previous album. This one definitely does stay a little bit more to me. This one, I think, ends better than it starts. Uh, it has a lot more beautiful moments at the end, a lot of really beautiful ballads, and some really interesting melody ideas that did just enough to stay on my list. Number five with 252 points, we have Tyler the Creator with Igor. One that I don't understand why people are as high on. It's not necessarily my cup of tea and there are some blemishes I can definitely see on this record. I personally like Flower Boy a lot better. That being said, it is still a solid Tyler the Creator album. He's doing well and it's definitely different from what he was doing before. This is definitely more of an R&B album with some indie touches rather than a rap album. If that kind of pushes you away i totally understand especially from what you've seen from him before but if you find this interesting it's definitely worth your time it definitely made my list just definitely not as high number four with 256 points we have billy eilish with when we all fall asleep where do we go this one is honestly my favorite pop album of the year it has so many great and interesting and diverse ideas that came from a 17 year old one that honestly could be album of the year, in, in my opinion. For a minute there, it was definitely album of the year for me. There's definitely a lot of albums vying for that spot this year. That just shows how good of a pop album this is. It, you can say it has Lana Del Rey or Lord vibes. You can say it's ASMR, but if you really look into it, it's so much more than bad guys. It's so much more than the memes. There's so much beautiful and interesting arrangement ideas, very interesting recording ideas. Billy Eilish and her brother do a phenomenal job on this album. And if you have not listened to it, you definitely need to. This is a good spot for this album. Number three with 290 points, we have Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds with Ghost Team or Ghost Team, if you will. This is another one that I was going to review on my Are You Inns. Beautiful album, gorgeous album. I really did not like Skeleton Tree and I understand that there's a lot of emotional depth to that album. For those of you who don't know, Nick Cave lost his son earlier in this decade. This album and Skeleton Tree, and I believe the album before that, are all a trilogy about the death of his son. Skeleton Tree is more bare bones, a little bit more minimal 
This one is luscious and so heartbreaking. It's a long album and it's not perfect. The second disc of the CD, CD is not as good as the first. And I think it's because of just how long some of those songs can be. Even as beautiful as they can be, some of these 14 minute songs aren't necessarily as interesting in my opinion, but it definitely left a mark on me and it makes me want to revisit Skeleton Tree and see if I just missed out the first time around. Definitely made my list. Number two, at 298 points, we have FK Twigs with Magdalene. Another album that I was planning on reviewing and actually with a friend. And the reason why is as good as a, a, an art pop, an experimental pop album this is, I still have a hard time putting it that high. It's interesting, it definitely is. But out of the nine songs, if I'm gonna be honest, only five or six are memorable. There are definitely a couple that just feel a little bit off to me. And I understand that there's a really interesting concept behind it, but I think the music doesn't always live up to the idea. Cellophane, is absolutely gorgeous. Holy Terrain, I think, is a really solid song, and Future does a decent job on there. Mary Magdalene is a good song as well, and I love the, the beginning song on the album. But as I look back, there are a couple of weaker songs on the album, and for an album to be number two on my list, it has to be, again, almost absolutely perfect. This still does make my list. I still need to figure out exactly where it's gonna place, but it is, a little bit weird to me to see this album this high and it makes me wonder if it's because of her reputation it makes me wonder if it's because of some of the staying single power of holy terrain and cellophane who knows but a lot of people have told me i'm wrong so probably a lot of people will still tell me i'm wrong it's just my opinion however the number one spot is the biggest offender in my opinion with 400 and 32 points, a full 100 points above FK Twigs, we have Lana Del Rey with Norman fucking Rockwell. Don't get me wrong, as you heard in my review, this is Lana Del Rey's best album by far. It's the most cohesive, it's the most diverse, and there's a lot of really solid songs on there, a lot of really memorable songs. However, as I've said, with the Taylor Swift album, as I've said with the National album, as I've said with the Vampire Weekend album. The problem that arises is it's too long and not every song is, in my opinion, good enough. There are a bunch of songs on there that feel like songs that could have come from previous albums and not in a good way. And when it boils down to that, an album that long, you need to have everything perfect if you think that it is the clear number one album of the year and it isn't the storytelling is great there's a lot of really personal songs on here but i feel like this album is getting way too much hype it definitely makes my list it's still a really solid album it's the most enjoyable long tell rate album that i've listened to but i can't sit here and say that this album is head and shoulders above every other album this year I think what boils down to for me is the lack of rock and metal albums on here. Though I understand they aren't as popular, it doesn't give validity to this list because you're only really focusing on certain genres. And trust me, there's a lot of great rap albums, there's a lot of great indie albums, there's a lot of great folk albums, there's a lot of great pop albums this year. This year is very hard when it comes to picking the best albums, but you're doing a disservice to all of the rock fans out there, the metal fans out there, to know that there's a bunch of really good albums this year, and I'm definitely going to show you guys that, but it's not horrible. There's a lot of really solid albums on here that I got introduced to and are on my list. Out of the 50, there's 30 on here that definitely are in the discussion for my top 50 or my honorable mentions. That's really solid list, if, if I do say so myself. I think there's a lot of really good work that is done on this particular website, and I would definitely implore you to check it out to see what everyone thinks and to go back to any of the other lists from previous years. So after this extended time, I am finally done with this video. 
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for letting me rant about this particular album, The Year List. Definitely check out some of the stuff if you find any of these albums interesting. And I hope that you are itching more now for my top 50 list because I've hinted at certain albums that are going to be making it, but I never necessarily said where they are going to be. And that's why you got to watch. That's why you got to subscribe. That's why you got to like this video. That's why you got to comment on what you think about this list. And then, of course, share this with your friends. I'll be back with the worst slash disappointing albums list. Until then, this is a music fan, and I'm signing off.